Example 2.9. In this example, we have a 6 feet diameter drainage conduit, which is shown in the picture. This drainage is only half full with water at rest. We need to determine the magnitude and the line of action of the resultant force that the water exerts on a one foot length of the curve section. Let's just start the problem by determining the area or the section that we will be evaluating. Since it's half of the circle and is symmetrical, we could use any of the bottom quarters um, as our selection. So we're going to use the left section, this is going to be, and then, then this notice that this goes across. So this is basically the volume that we will be using. This has uh, one foot of the curve, and this is the diameter, which is equal to three feet. Okay, now let's evaluate this cross-sectional area and the forces on this area. So let's do a free body diagram. So this is the section, and we have vertical forces and horizontal forces. The force one that we're going to have, which is going to be the horizontal force, is going to be equal to the amount of force that is applied from the right side of the tank into this particular section. And then we have that the weight that is applied by the fluid is equal to the vertical forces that we have. Okay, these are the only four forces that are present in our particular example. So we need to calculate F1 and the weight. So let's just start by calculating F1. F1 is simply a hydrostatic force applied in a vertical surface. So we can calculate it by using gamma times HC times the cross-sectional area. Please note that the cross-sectional, uh, since this is a rectangle, the area is going to be basically uh, base times the height that we're going to have, and the value of HC is going to be at the middle of this cross-section. So if we use those values, we find that F1 is equal to 62.4 pounds cubic feet, the value of HC is equal to three halves. This is located at the middle of the cross-sectional area. And the um, area is going to be three feet times one foot. That is the cross-sectional area that we have in this rectangle. Therefore, the value of F1 is going to be equal to 2.81 Please note that the value of F1 is exactly the same value for uh, the horizontal force. Let's now calculate the position of this force. The first thing that we need to determine is what is the type of distribution of the pressure in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, this is the surface that we have. And as we already know, the pressure changes linearly. Because it is linear, we see that the area or the region that it forms is a triangle. Therefore, the location of the centroid of the triangle is one third from the base. So the location of the force F1, which is gonna go through here, one third from the base, is going to be one third from three feet. Therefore, it's going to be one foot. So it's one foot from the bottom of the base, or two feet from the surface. The next step is to calculate the vertical force. The vertical force is equal to the amount of the weight carried by the water. So the weight that we are going to have is going to be equal to the specific weight times the volume that we are going to have. Please note that the volume in this case is going to be equal to pi over 4 radius to the second times the length, which is 1 foot. So if we calculate the weight, in this case, is going to be equal to 62.4 pound per cubic feet times 
pi over 4, 3 feet square times 1 foot. Therefore, the value of the weight is going to be equal to 441 pounds. Let's now evaluate the position at which the weight and the vertical force are crossing. We're going to call it um, H2. However, this is a horizontal dimension. That is going to be equal to the location of the centroid in that quarter of a circle section. And that is going to be equal to 4 R 3 pi. And entering the values that we have, we find that the value is equal to 1.27 feet. The last step is to get the resultant force, which is basically the summation of the forces that we have horizontal and the summation square and the summation of the forces that we have vertical and square. So the resultant force that we have is going to be equal to um, F1 square plus the weight square. Those are the only two forces that we have. And by calculating, we find that the resultant force is equal to 523 pounds. Let's now try to represent these values graphically. We have the cross-sectional area that we're evaluating. We know that the resultant force goes through a point. That point is located vertically one foot from the base and also has a distance from the edge equal to 1.27. Then from that particular edge, we create a resultant force that goes through, the, through that edge and the point that we calculated. And this is going to be the resultant force. So this is the line of action of that particular force. And that force is equal to 523 pounds. Please go back and review the different calculations, the selection of the cross-sectional areas, and how to be able to find the resultant force and the line of action as described in the problem.